Yeah. I don't know. I, I never, I took it seriously. It was always something that I wanted to do, but it was always like, this is what I'm going to do. It was almost like I was able to find my passion at a really young age. I knew that like while I was going to school, while it was really important to my family and, and mm -hmm. to myself that I did well in school, I knew that like, oh, well, these things that I'm learning are going to help me in my acting. They're going to help me in my acting. There's some things that, you know, you get frustrated when things may not go your way or if you don't get a project or if you, know, if you have a bad year, but like ultimately it's always like, I want to get back on set. It's also patience, mm -hmm. which I think yeah. is one of the most undervalued, you know, things that we can hold on to, especially our generation. Like we're used to everything coming quick. Mm -hmm. Everything's fast, everything's convenient. We yeah. like tap a button on our phone and someone shows up to the door with food. Mm -hmm. Like it's amazing. There's so much instant gratification. So embracing the patience, I think, mm -hmm. is, is a really powerful thing for people our age. What's up, everyone? My name is Dominique Columbus. Welcome to episode three of the Inspire to Inspire podcast, the place for actors, filmmakers, and content creators around the world just to tune in, gain insight on their own journey, and connect the dots. So make sure to go on like and subscribe as we drop episodes weekly every Wednesday. On this week's episode, we got Cullen Ford and we got Blake Michael. Now, what's really dope about these two guests is they've been friends since they were kids. Both coming up in the industry, they actually had the same agent. So over the years, They've really just had a lot of experience, let's just say that. So to introduce our first guest, we got Cullen Ford. Now, over the years, Cullen has just really been building a name for himself to the point where in 2019, he actually was the lead actor in the hit show, Daybreak on Netflix. So what's life like during the apocalypse? It's awesome. There's no rules left because adults turn into what we call ghoulies. The world is backwards. I just fit in way better now. Sure, there are still jocks, nerds, and cheerleaders. But I have everything I ever wanted. But it's not about having cool shit. And after Daybreak, it didn't stop from there. You can check him out in movies like Captain Marvel. You can check him out on the show Walker on CW. He also has a brand new show called A Thousand Tomorrows, which is going to be airing this year, February 24th. And on top of that, you can also go check him out in the new hit show, Dahmer, on Netflix. And now to introduce our second guest, we got Blake Michael. Again, Blake has been in the business since he was a kid. And I'm talking three years old, okay? From getting print campaigns, commercial deals, to getting his first show at the age of eight years old, to where that actually led him to get his first lead role in the hit Disney film, Lemonade Mouth, in 2011. Are you excited, Charles? Soccer tryouts are today. Oh, right, yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled. And over the years, Blake has been growing as an actor, as a producer, and an entrepreneur. Check this out, man, it's your dad. Still proclaiming his innocence, prosecuted by ADA Abigail Grandiker. Mrs. Grandiker. You can actually check him out in the HBO Max film called Princes of the Row. He's also one of the main voiceovers on Voltron on Netflix, to be more specific, Voltron the Legendary Defender. And on top of that, if you're a content creator that's looking for another asset, you want to make money online, well, Blake has created a company called Lamanu that allows creators to make money for what they do. So if you're looking for another asset, I highly suggest you go and peep that. And this episode was sponsored by The Shell Corp. Make sure to go to shellcorp.com, use my promo code Don's Perspective. You're gonna get 15% off everything. You wanna get a dope crew neck shirt like this, you wanna get some slacks, trench coats, even something cooler to work out in, man, make sure to tap into shellcorp.com, enter my promo code Don's Perspective, and you're gonna get 15% off everything. Make sure to go and hit that like and subscribe, and let's tap into the new podcast, man, episode three.
Yeah. So just to dive into it, man, the first thing that like I would love to ask you guys is like, why acting? I I don't know about Blake, but I wanted to be a Power Ranger. So nice. Yeah. <laughs> did you ever audition for Power Ranger? No, I never did. Uh, but like, I'm wait, a, which color? I want Red Ranger. The Red Ranger. There was like also like this one episode where all of the Red Rangers got together. I don't know why. Maybe the Red Ranger was was one. I maybe uh, was one of the more popular ones. But mm. the Red Ranger episode was crazy. They got like all the Red Rangers of the past mm. together mm. and they united. <laughs> In that moment, I was like, "That's me. I want to be one of those dudes." <laughs> that's, 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 that's five. Age five, I was like, "Boom, that's it." Red that's the start. Like, oh, I'm gonna be an actor. That's yeah. amazing. That's fire. I just watched a lot of TV growing up, and mm. I was just felt I wanted to be a part of that world. You mm-hmm. know, you want to be inside the box. I want to be inside the box. Yes. I think my mom even got me like a Power Rangers costume. That's dope. And I was like. Was it Red Ranger? Uh, yeah, but I think yeah. I was like, I don't want this. I was a Red Ranger. I was a kid. I, I rocked with the Red Ranger. Yeah. So, so were your parents kind of like influencing that decision or was it something you came to? No, it's something that I wanted to do. My parents are both in um, kind of more of like a business world. My mom was a CPA and my dad was, uh, you know, an executive at a company. So he, you know, they really didn't do anything too creative with their with their free time, even they were hustling. So yeah. uh, I was always kind of the one that drove like the, the acting thing. My mom had a uh, an, an, a secretary mm-hmm. uh, at her job where who um, whose daughter worked in casting, and I remember when I mentioned that I wanted to be part of uh, the acting world, mm-hmm. she kind of uh, seeked her advice and um, mm-hmm. learned about Jake Purvis and some of the open casting calls that they were having. And at that time, they were casting Sweet Home Alabama with uh, <laughs> Reese Witherspoon and Patrick hey. Dempsey, and I had like a you know one line type role on that and I went and auditioned for it and got it and mm, nice. kind of was signed up front by the folks that were casting it as well and kind of got the ball rolling in it. And that's the same people you're with too? Yeah. yeah, I think what's so cool about me and Colin is we had the same agent growing up since mm. we were like four years old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and we went to the same acting school. That's a vibe. Yeah. 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 That's dope. Yeah, that's that's history. Yeah, we pretty much moved yeah. out here like within around a couple years. Time. Yeah, around the same yeah. time. So That's it. So. What about you? Like why acting? For me, it was like, I always love to play pretend. So okay. similar to Colin, totally. like, wanting to be that Red Ranger. I was watching TV. I would see these kids in commercials mm. like playing pretend. And yeah. I thought that was so cool. And That's I was like, dope. I want to do that. I want to be in the box. And so my mom put me in acting classes, mm. uh, which is funny enough where I met Colin yeah. and so many other awesome peers. And that allowed me the space to play pretend with other kids my age. Mm. Um, and then eventually like learn those skills and those tools that I would need to go on and, and know what to do in an audition. Um, but it was a very like organic process. Nothing was forced, you know, something that I wanted to, to do and I was always passionate about. Yeah, I think like I got super lucky because a lot of people at a young age are very impressionable. The parents may or may not know what to do. And so mm-hmm. um, they're also probably, probably really like competitive too. Yeah, but also there's lots of things out there that people get sucked into like gimmicks, scams. Yep, you know, yeah, give me yep. this amount of money and I'll promise you this X, Y, and Z and it doesn't end up paying out and people mm-hmm. are left high and dry and then they get a bad taste for the industry and then it's, everything soured for them. Yeah. You know, facts. so it's a we, big bummer. And that's part of why I feel like we're so lucky because we found the right acting school at yeah. the company acting studio in Atlanta, John and Lucina, like, they are they help, still out there doing it? They're still out there. Yeah, that's that's like, they yeah, help guide us, but like you said, there are so many scams. That's and, powerful. Yeah. Especially geared towards kids. Yeah. Because there's that desire to like mm. be on TV. Yeah. 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 So like what's interesting to me is like I, I wanna kinda like hear 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 your thoughts on this. Cause like, bro, you started young. Like you started like young, you know, you got lemonade mouth, you know. How um, old were you on that, by the way? Uh, Lemonade Mouth, I was 13 years old, but yeah. I got my first, I was hosting my own TV show when I was nine. Damn. Damn. That's cool. That's yeah. bad. I started pretty, pretty young. And I think same for Colin too. I mean, yeah. I remember mm-hmm. being uh, in audition rooms with mm-hmm. you yeah. for big projects since yeah. probably six or seven years old. Yeah. I mean, we had some cool stuff going on out of Atlanta. I think we both kind of did as much as we could. There's a lot more film in Atlanta now than yeah. there was when yeah. we were there. Right? Sure. So, I bet. so because, so at that time, the goal was always climb the ladder, do what you can do here, but the real uh, next step, if you wanna do this, is to go to California, uh, whether that's move out to LA full time or to just go out for the, what was, what used to be pilot season, pilot season is <laughs> kind of gone now. It's kind of spread out and changed, yeah, especially due to the coronavirus. You, you got it in like, like streaming February, shows. March, it comes back in April. Yeah, and it, it, like, it, you know, there's pilots only... being created and filmed year round now, especially with the streaming services. Right. So 
it's a different game. But back then it was come out here for those, you know, few, uh, pre-summer months, summer months mm-hmm. and make it happen. So I remember coming out doing three months in st- uh, Studio City oh, and yeah. just lived out there every, close to the Oakwood where everybody else yep, lived. Everybody came right. out and lived at the Oakwood. That's you, why. Did you live there? No, I lived right down the street, yeah, but I, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, now it's Avalon. Oh, it's the Avalon now. Okay. Avalon now, yeah. Gentrified. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that. you guys, I'm just thinking like from your guys' perspective, being that young, did you understand like, yo, I'm auditioning for a big project right now? Was that even a, a thought I think, really? I think I got it, but I don't think I understood like, I, I mean, it never, I don't know. I, I never, I took it seriously. It was always something that I wanted to do, but it was always like, this is what I'm going to do. It was almost like I was able to find my passion at a really young age. I knew that like while I was going to school, while it was really important to my family and, and mm-hmm. to myself that I did well in school, I knew that like, oh, well, these things that I'm learning are gonna help me in my acting. They're gonna help me in my acting. So you always knew that it was like, like that's this the is vision. what you're doing. Yeah, this that's is what I'm vision. doing. That's yeah. hard. You know, and I always just loved it. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, never, it's never, it's some things, that, you know, you get frustrated when things may not go your way or if Naturally. you don't get a project or if you, know, if you have a bad year, but like ultimately it's always like, I wanna get back on set, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. So, so, so Growing up in the process of things, like how did you guys feel you dealt with rejection? <sighs> I think it was I think it was tough. I think sometimes I think like you, you know, for like I always say like if you go in for a regular audition and like the first round and you get a call back, you're like, all right, cool, I got a call back, but I can let it go. Like if I didn't get it, it wasn't meant to be. Yeah. I didn't do my thing. Uh, whatever it may be. But then once you get like the in it, once you sessions. start getting to like, you know, testing for it or mm-hmm. doing a chemistry read yeah. and getting really into it, starting to develop the character on another level that maybe you didn't do on your first audition mm-hmm. because you didn't get the full script yet or all those things that start to add to the the preparedness that mm-hmm. you, you know, take into the room. Uh, I think it starts to get a little bit sad or a little bit daunting when you don't get it. Yeah. yeah. And it, it can mess with you mentally. I mean, mm-hmm. going into those things, first of all, there's the trade off. So there's sacrifices you kind of touched on, like, going to school and maybe not seeing your friends also. Mm-hmm. But then like going into rooms and, and seeing the contracts before you've gotten the part, seeing the money on the table, mm-hmm. um, even at a young age, like there's a lot on the line and there's mm-hmm. a lot of pressure. And so dealing with so many rejections, I mean, how many auditions do you think you've been on in your life? Oh like, man, I don't know. Over a thousand? <laughs> it's, it's over, yeah. Shit, it's, it's, I know y'all, I'm, we've been doing this while, I'm just really like almost eight years now. I can only imagine the auditions I've been on. So y'all. Yeah. Holy shit. shit. Something my mom no, always saying? said, like, and Tommy is, is when you go into an audition, we're going in there to learn. Yeah. I say we as if she's like coming in the audition. Yeah, she's right. right. It's the but right. You're, you're going in there to learn. And if you can walk out of the audition, having learned something to say like, oh, I can do X, Y, Z better next time. Then you're just becoming 1% better every time. Mm-hmm. And it's less about booking the role you're and more about what you can room. come out. Sure, like what you can come out having learned. So yeah, yeah. Take I, some of the pressure off. I agree. Yeah, and to add to that, I feel like um, yeah, I tested for a show back in November. Mm-hmm. Didn't get it. Mm-hmm. Another actor got it. But I come to find out recently uh, they're replacing that actor. So they called me and a couple other group of guys come back in and test for it again. Mm-hmm. Went back in, tested for it again. Starting to get excited about it a little <laughs> bit more. Yeah. So then I got into the next round, chemistry read with the mm-hmm. actress that most of the scenes are with didn't you know didn't get past that round and it's like it's a bummer yeah. because it went away it came back again and now it's like yeah. you gotta love it you gotta love all these things with like open arms yeah, big time right. because like yeah. if you let the anxiety of like oh how well did i do or am i gonna get it then you're just gonna ultimately get in the way of your own either performance or just like psych yourself out mm-hmm. so it crushes I, a it lot crushes, of yeah. actors yeah. so yeah. I, this is this is perfect then to say when to like why well, i wanted to bring it because we're before you got here we we're just talking about this right I was like, when he was younger, right? You could tell he was one of those kids where he hit puberty faster, right? right? Like he just, he already had Dude, I was shaving at nine years old. Yeah, <laughs> hair, you know what I'm saying? That's not even a joke. <laughs> like, yeah. it's That's crazy. Like, like, we could have been the same age and I looked five years younger than this guy, I was right? So, yeah, I was the same, I was young looking. So uh, my question is like, you know, as actors, we all have like that one thing that like, we gotta get over or it's like a hurdle, right? So. For you, you were explaining to me how, yeah, it was cool you looked older, but that made things harder for you to book. Why? Yeah, looking older made things harder for me to book because, you know, I'm 13 years old play- in Lemonade Mouth. I'm, I'm playing a 17-year-old. Mm-hmm. So it's like being 13 but looking 17, 
makes it difficult because you're in the audition room going up against 17 year olds who naturally have more experience, more talent, more know-how, their brains are more fully developed and they have the experiences. Mm. You know, when you're acting, depending on what technique you're using, you want to base your acting off of real experiences maybe. So being 13, there's only so many real experiences you have, especially when you get into those 16, 17, 18 year old roles, the content in the scripts are very different than you would see with a 13 year old. Mm. I mean, you're dealing with, sex and you're dealing with maybe babies and drugs Mm -hmm. and things like that so at 13 that was more challenging so you feel like you had to grow up faster not grow up faster but there was definitely a a requirement and necessity to have to understand the concepts Mm -hmm. on the script so you know in acting school they you know i was in the the adult program essentially and so they would put those kind of scripts in front of me to get me used to it Mm -hmm. um so yeah, I never felt like I needed to grow up faster, yeah. but it was just part of the game. Just to be more aware of it, just to like, you're right now, it's the game you're in. It was tough. I mean, even at five years old, when my reading comprehension wasn't even that great, they would, you know, in an open casting call, they would group me in the eight and nine-year-olds, mm. you know, and not the younger kids. And well, so, but he, here's the beautiful thing that I see in that, though. It's like, it's kind of like, like, for example, I'm the baby in my family, right? And I was always around, like, older people. And as tough as it may be to like get thrown in the ranks with like older people, it speeds up your learning curve. Yeah, your maturity. And it does. And it like you, you, you start seeing things faster at a younger age because I've been saying this on damn near every podcast, but the quote that I love is one of my favorite quotes. I need to get this tattooed, but it's not, <laughs> long, it's, not it's, it's not about how long you've been alive, but how long you've been paying attention. So if you've been paying oh, attention mm-hmm. for like, since you're young and you you learn things for the fast pace, you get to apply things faster than the older people did. Right. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So that's why I think it was interesting. Now I'm curious, was it opposite for you? Like, cause I feel like you have the thing that I live with. We look hella young. Like, yeah, like I'm, I'm still, I'm still, I can still audition for stuff that's high school. Yeah. You know, now if I shave and mm. you know do my hair a certain way and wear like a t-shirt that's mm-hmm. a little big, then I look small. You know, yeah. it's it's easy. You know, you can hide your body in different ways. But did you ever struggle with like trying to make yourself look older for certain roles in like the maturity aspect? I feel like I do that now when I'm okay. when I'm going out for to play my age. Like mm-hmm. I feel like I have to put on a tight fitting shirt and you know I you know mm-hmm. I go and I make sure I you know hit the chest press before <laughs> I you yeah. know <laughs> before yeah just to make sure that I love you. I love just, you. just you know because when the camera is in front of you just depending on how you're sitting and lined up you know you can tell any story you want just by looking a certain way so Absolutely. it's just about kind of ha- i feel like kind of hacking those things mm. to your to your benefit mm. you know mm. that's what i deal with now but when i was when we were in uh, both the same age and teenage years i feel like I feel like I was constantly trying to look a little bit older because I was like skinny and thin and just like, yeah, trying to maybe look a little bit more my age even. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's tough to figure that out because you're like, like I, I dealt with that. You know what I'm saying? Where yeah. I'm like, I get certain auditions where like, like it's because it's, for me, like I'm 29, but I still go out for like young stuff, like 21, yeah. you no, know, 2018, high school, where high school, I just audition for a sophomore role, you know yeah. what I'm saying? The flash. And I'm like, 29 go off for 17 year old you know what i'm saying but bro you're 29 yeah yeah damn dude insane yeah I, but th- thank you i appreciate it. but that's <laughs> been the the hard thing because whenever i get some of these older these older roles i'll walk into the room and i'm like y'all brought some like grown ass men in here yo and i felt like all right i need to step up my game you know what i'm saying like so for example like uh, a thing that i feel like i struggle with and I'm, i want you to, to elaborate on your experience too there's times I walk into rooms and I'll be the only light skinned one in there. All dark skins in the room. I'm yeah. the only light skinned one in there, right? I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so why, why am I here? Like, it seems that they're casting a pretty clear look for the vision, right? And I go in the room. Surprising, I get a call back. I'm like, oh shit. They want the options. Yeah, yeah. They want the, I'm like, yeah. cool. Surprising, I get a chemistry read. There you go. I'm like, bet. And then I don't get the role, right? Yeah. And I'm awesome. like, you know, and so so it's what it, what, it, what it came down to, I found myself um, having to get rid of a limiting belief. You know, we've been talking about this more often, but a limiting, a limiting belief of thinking, you know, like, uh, 
my skin can hold me back from a role. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because he has a similar experience where he goes out for roles and he feels like he's like Arabic enough. Middle right. Eastern stuff. Yeah. I, you know, Hollywood does have their idea of what certain people look like. Like that's right. understood. You know right. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like once I figured out that, okay, this actually makes me different because I don't look like their stereotypical image of what a Middle Eastern person looks like. So if I get called back, it's because one, I look so much different than all the rest of these people. <laughs> that, again, they want the options. Yep. Yeah, yep. you know, and, and you look like you. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that gives me a leg up being different. So that's how I started looking at it. Now, yeah. you know, what well, you hope at the end of the day, they just cast the person who is best for, for the role. role. Yeah, but they don't do that, and you, we all know that. Yeah, do that's that. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You literally just <laughs> take the words out of my mouth. They don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> I deal with this too, right? Because that's all I want to get to. I want to see like what's y'all version of like what you like do. I mean, sometimes that. they do, but sometimes they don't. You yeah. know, there's so many things that go in. You know, and we all know there's so many things that go into play: politics, followers, sure, you yeah. know, all of those things. I, I find myself either being too white for the ethnic roles, okay, and too ethnic for the white roles. Oh and shit! Because you know, I, I have some diversity in my bloodline. And yeah. I don't look white. You like, don't I have dark features. You look like Latino like, or Middle Eastern. Yeah, like, you got this. we're all going for the middle. Like I'm not Middle Eastern. Maybe yeah. those guys deserve the roles more than me. Mm. You know, to, to give the 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 part its justice, right? Mm-hmm. It's like going out for Aladdin. Yeah, that'd be fun and all, but I'm not Middle Eastern. I'm not Arabic. Gotcha. Um, so anyway, it, there's a balance, but yeah, you hope at the end of the day that they just pick the person who's best for the role. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can't let that psych you out. Yeah, and that's the thing that I, what I want to talk about because I'm like I feel like a lot of actors get psyched out about certain things like that and it's like no matter what just do what you're supposed to do totally just walk into the room do what you're supposed to do and and it'll get down to testing Mm -hmm. it'll get down to the top three when it's like of course they pick the guy who can actually speak spanish yeah Yeah. you know what i mean like yeah and maybe he deserves it more it's just it's tough it's a mental game back Mm -hmm. to the projection it's Mm -hmm. hard and that's why you need to have something outside of this everyone talk talk to me about this Mm -hmm. like coming up whenever i would meet someone who was you know doing it or whatever they'd always tell me like even when you book a show or get a a big film or something have something else that you're doing because this is even if it's just personal for yourself it fills your soul you know facts facts like what do you guys do to keep yourself balanced uh well you know so i work out a lot that's Mm -hmm. something that i picked up during with finding myself during the quarantine with all this pandemic like Mm -hmm. downtime that i've had i you know i used to go to la fitness every day Mm -hmm. Uh, I used to see you there. Yeah, right? I saw him there. And um, he's over here throwing up two twenty five. Dude, yeah. he's a beast. It's too late. No, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, but so you know, I was like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work out with a buddy of mine. So mm-hmm. we got together, and then you know, his schedule started to get kind of conflicted, and I was like, I need, I'm into this, I'm into this. So I bought mm-hmm. like the weight equipment that I could find. I bought like a bench press and some free weights and I just been getting it in my garage. There so you go. There been you reading go. a lot, um, listening to a lot of books on tape. Dope. Uh, I like this one speaker, Les Brown. He's Les Brown. Yeah. He's, yeah. Yeah. he's sick. So yeah, I bro. listen to him a lot and uh, yeah, I feel like that's mm. my way to like kind of center myself. And yeah. You feel like that keeps like mentally healthy in order to like yeah. elevate to the next level? Yeah, I do. I, I feel like that plus like, I feel like I used this year to really just kind of focus on me. That way I knew that when, when the world got ready for all of us again, I was ready for the world. Mm. Did you find that cutting back drinking or stopping drinking? Did that help you a lot? It just helped. Uh, I don't really think it didn't really, I don't think it affects like my so like personal life, but I felt that it helped me reach my fitness goals yep. easier. Like I felt like, you know, I wasn't waking up groggy or, you know, or wasn't, um, you know, at the end of the day, I didn't, you know, turn to having a drink to relax. I yep. could just kind of like decompress in another way. And ultimately mm-hmm. like my muscles thanked me for it. So yeah, I quit Absolutely. drinking altogether. So really? that's what mm-hmm. yeah. gives me so much like mental clarity. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That's focus. Cool that you did that. yeah. Focus. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Mental clarity yeah. is a super, super like, Super, super fucking necessary, man. Like, yeah, the fog coming out of drinking is like so much more annoying to deal with than just like the couple hours you had fun while drinking. I don't know. Yeah, you literally know? that next morning when it's like you're fucking dehydrated. You yeah, know, you're like yeah. I don't want to do anything right now. Mm-hmm. Why did I drink last night? You know. So speaking of like cutting things out and getting rid of things, like I'm just curious because I know that we all have habits and patterns that we struggle with, right? And I'm really curious to like, what were the things that you guys struggled with? Like have some patterns rather be as an actor, as an individual. And like, what did you do to get yourself out of it? And how did you feel in that process? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel like 
I would go into like, I would put so much pressure on like, after not working for a while, like after mm-hmm. having done some things I was really proud of and really, you know, excited about having after not working for a while, been like, all right, I gotta get something. How long did you not work for? Probably, you know, I mean, you go and you do like little things, but you know, that when you go into a big project, something yeah. that, that you're, yeah. you know, and you're, and you're ready to cl- take that next step up the me. ladder, mm-hmm. you know, it's not like anything ever is going back down, but when you do the little smaller things along the way, it fills your soul. It keeps that drive going, but you really always want to elevate and elevate and elevate. Yes, and that's what, Absolutely. that's what it's all about. That's why we're here mm-hmm. grinding it out. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like, you know, when you go through long periods of time, whether it be five months, six months, a year, two years, uh, without having that validation, you start to be, you start to put a lot of pressure on the individual, on the next audition. Oh, yeah. it's not this one. I gotta get this one. I gotta get. It's so like it becomes a knee. Start, I feel it. like it, it's that the drain is almost like the love. You may not even like the project that exactly. much, but you like. I gotta get this job. You need money. You need. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Whether it's that or you just feel like it's I got. Just, so I gotta get back on set. Validation. Am I not good anymore? Have I? Did I lose? Did I have it back then? And now have I lost it? Mm. What am I doing differently? Yeah. You start to like go through these like checklists of things. And then you gotta just kind of now you gotta just say boom. None of that's right. that valid. Mad at that go. You know that is you know fear. Les Brown says false fear is false evidence appearing real. That's exactly yes, all that is. It's yeah. false evidence just clouding your judgment, mm-hmm. making you feel and act a certain way. When you just gotta you know they say not to let rest on your laurels, but you gotta rest on what you know. You gotta rest mm-hmm. on you know. I did this before, I'm gonna do it again. Mm. Yeah. My buddy Andreas uh, got me into this 21 days of abundance program early last year. I feel like that really, you know, filled my soul and, and mm. helped me realize, you know, focus less about the outcome of things and just live in the moment. There we go. Yeah. Totally. Live in the present, just focus on like, what can I do now Facts. to improve myself 1%? Mm. Yeah. Um, whether that's, you know, going to the gym, staying healthy, cutting back on drinking. So that's that, the only thing we can control is the now. Right. right. We can't control tomorrow what happened yesterday. Right. What happened yesterday is depression. Yeah. What's gonna happen in the future is anxiety. Mm-hmm. So just live in the present and just fight oh, over it. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. funny, I, I forgot who said that, but when I first heard that, it clicked so many dots. See, I was like, every time I feel anxious, I'm like, what am I so oh I need to slow down. Something. Yeah. 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 And you're like auditions can you can make somebody anxious because you just had a great director session, a Zoom meeting, you know, where producer and directors are like, man, if I get this job and like this changes, but, this happens. But going off what you just said, right? It's like when you when you when you you're up for something and like you're 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 like, I need this job because like you haven't worked for a while. Yeah. You know, it's you start creating these unnecessary pressures on yourself and I feel like it depletes the mission. Totally. Mm-hmm. It depletes the mission because once we start chasing something, that means we're trying to force something to happen in a time that's not meant to happen. In. Totally. Versus when you desire, it's like, okay, you know what? We know we love acting. You know, we love we love this art, this craft. And as long as we do everything we need to do on a daily basis, it's going to happen what's supposed to happen. Because whatever's meant for you isn't missed. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I, that's such a hard concept. To it's learn. a hard concept to learn, it's like, though. It's like, it's like, it's like loving something. Thing. It's like, yeah. love, it's like when, you know, if, if you've gone through a breakup and you don't want to be broken up with that person, then you got to like, let them go, if, see if they'll come back. It's like, mm-hmm. you have to love, love it with open arms, you mm-hmm. know, learning to surrender. Yeah. yeah. It's also patience, mm-hmm. which I think yeah. is one of the most undervalued, you know, things that we can hold on to, especially our generation. Like we're used to everything coming quick. Mm-hmm. Everything's fast. Everything's convenient. We yeah. like tap a button on our phone and someone shows up to the door with food. Mm-hmm. Like it's amazing. There's so much instant gratification. So embracing the patience, I think mm-hmm. is, is a really powerful thing for people our age. Mm-hmm. Facts. And all patience is, is just like faith that this is going to happen for me. It's yeah. just a matter of time. I think my, my personally, for me, my, my belief in God and my faith really keeps me anchored. Like when I get like, spiraling out of control like mm, yeah. just knowing that i have like somebody out there looking over me and watching me makes me just feel comfortable yeah mm. seriously that's why i so, have this bar on my chest yeah. it reminds me to keep god first i'm like if i put anything in front of him like that's why i have problems and not that i'm not trying to make it a religious thing i'm very spiritual so yeah. i believe in god but i, I take uh things from different religious practices i'm like it makes me feel more spiritual i'm like god i meditate yeah. uh do this cleanse chakras you know do all that stuff but I, 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 I find that some of the most powerful people are the ones who know how to center themselves and how to quiet their mind because with the amount of, uh, how can I say, uh, there's, there, there's, 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 I don't say boundaries, but sometimes people try to put so much on us in this business, right? And you have to be such a strong individual to be able to carry that because 
you been on the leader project, you never been on the leader project, you and me as well. And it's like, the next thing I wanna dive into is like, for example, when you book Daybreak, bro, like you're new lead on the show, you're on these billboards, I've now Sunset, Hollywood. Yeah. How did the people react around you and how did you like handle that in terms of like, seeing like, okay, did you feel like people's intentions were in the wrong place, right? Like, what was that experience yeah, like? Yeah, I mean, I think it's always like, look, with any situation, when if you have something cool going on, more people are gonna start reaching out to you. Yeah. You're gonna get people popping up in your life that maybe didn't pop up before. Yeah. A lot of it is genuine in the sense people are just saying, "Yo, they haven't seen your face in a while," sure. and now and now you're and now you're in front of their face, literally, like because of a little word or Don't something. Forget about me. And so they text yeah. and say, "Hey, I just saw your thing. I'm super stoked to see your show." And that feels really it's genuine. Blessing. That feels super sick. Yeah. Like, that's real genuine. Yeah. When you start having people kind of pop in in other ways that don't seem like artificial. Follow me back. It probably means, <laughs> it, probably means it wasn't, you know, it, it probably means that there's an ulterior motive to going on. Facts, so, facts. You just gotta look out for those things. Yeah. yeah, and what helps you to be able to see more clearly and be able to watch that, like watch out for that, I'm curious. I don't know, I guess it's maybe just experience, like having yeah. having seen it before, dealt with it before, you know what feels right, you know when somebody's like been a genuine, and also kind of just like remembering like what your last interaction with that person yeah. was, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, like how did we end things with that person, mm -hmm. you know, what was, what was my experience with them with, was it cool, are we, have we hung out before, or was mm -hmm. it, is, is it just somebody that's popping up, yeah. and so you just go look at that, and you, you know, you know, we have people in your life, so you just make that, you know, make that call. Was it similar for you too? Yeah, I think it's, I mean, yeah, man, when, when I, when I got my first big movie, mm -hmm. Lemonade Mouth, it was like, everyone was popping in saying what's up. And I'm sure you had a similar thing with something as big as Daybreak. Um, yeah, you just got to trust that, you know, the, the right people are coming in your life at the right time. And, you know, you can still have a phone call with someone, even if they're just trying to get Facts. that follow back. Facts. Um, just say, hey, what's up? How are you doing? I've reconnected mm -hmm. with more like OG friends, like even from third grade mm -hmm. this past year than ever. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's so cool. And it kind of helps me remember who I was back then. I love that. Yeah. Because yeah. I've grown, we've changed, we've developed. Mm -hmm. Like from 10 years old to now I'm 24, like so much has happened. You guys are consciously making an effort to grow. You know, it wasn't just like, oh, I booked this thing, I'm the greatest thing alive. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? There's always been like growth. Yeah. You guys are always moving forward. But so. did you ever find yourself getting comfortable at one point? You know? Yeah, I think so. I think that you get comfortable, like, you know, I think you get comfortable. Like, I was on a show when I was 16 and I was really excited about it, mm -hmm. but I thought it would continue. And it went for one season, and then when it went for a second season, and then when it went for a third season, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, great, this is going to go for a long time. And then it, ended after the third season mm -hmm. um, and at that point I hadn't made big purchases that were going to get me in trouble or anything but I was like I, I was thinking about it and I was excited and then you get pissed off because that stuff doesn't happen and like that I should have never like I should have never had that attitude mm -hmm. you know and so you quickly get out of those things and I have a great family and everything and I you know it was like it was more of just like a a quick like oh, reality check mm -hmm. but you quickly humbled and you get back to it you know what I mean mm -hmm. so I think that's a big part of it is you just gotta. So on another note, you went through the phase too. Where you started making a lot of shit. You spent the shit quick. You no, was I mean, come, huh? I didn't, but I, I okay. almost did. I was okay. thinking about it. You know, I okay. wanted to buy a house, and you know, I was only eight. I was eighteen. I want to yeah. buy a new house, and you know, I, you just, I had to, I had to pump the brakes on those decisions, take a reality check, and realize that those things were going to come later, mm -hmm. and that you know, in tenfold, it's going to be way better when, Good. when you know, now, mm -hmm. now I'm in my first house, I'm Good. loving it. Good. Yeah, yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. yeah. So you know, it's it, it, it comes with time, and you know, mm -hmm. it's it just. Um, I'm happy ultimately that I waited mm -hmm. and that I didn't make those decisions then because mm -hmm. they they come and they happen. I see it a lot. You see it a lot in the music industry mostly. Yeah, exactly. These guys will get yeah. these record label checks mm -hmm. um, and they don't really understand the whole deal of like recoupment. And then and tax. Yeah. <laughs> tax. Yeah. 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 Tax. Shit tax. Really yeah. They don't understand that a million dollars isn't a million dollars. Like Sam, you got yeah. Chill, bro. Yeah. 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 I love that video. So, that Russ, video? Yeah. That's a, that's so a there's great a video clip. of Russ talking about how a million dollar record deal really is a million bucks. It's about $300,000. Mm. A million dollars. Yeah. After taxes, after you pay your managers, your agents, people don't realize that, yeah, if you book a lead in a big show, there's big money involved. But you're paying your agent 10%, your manager 10%. Maybe you have a PR. PR you drop in 4K on a PR for yeah. a month. You're paying tax on, and the tax goes on the top number, mm -hmm. not the number you get after you've paid all of your people. Right. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Did you guys ever have to like, like you've had PRs, right? Yeah. How much have you guys had to pay your PRs? It's like, it's like what you said. It's like four or five, depending on who you go with. It's like you know, four or five crazy. Not a lot of people know that shit, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's like, thinking of that concept, like, cause I was telling him when, like, when I, when I were like, 
first uh, season four right now, again, right? A same boat where I was like, they're telling me to be back next season. I was like, hell yeah, bet they brought me to the show. I was like, cool. Mm-hmm. Brought me back and then and I had the, the film with Johnny Depp. So I was like, I'm gonna get a PR now. And I'm started dropping for five months, four thousand dollars a month. So I'm like, that adds up. I'm like, damn, I'm just spend hella bread on the shit. Nothing comes out. Right. Nothing happened. Like I'm getting oh, press and shit like that. Right. Cool, and getting verified on Instagram. Great, cool. I only have like two thousand followers, so they made it cool. I had a check, but right. whatever. I'm not getting brand deals um, at the time. And in the process of it, right, I'm like, okay, take a step back and understand like how easy it is to want to spend when you have the checks coming in. Because I feel like I would love a lot of actors to learn to pump the brakes. Yeah. Slow down because when the money comes in, it's so easy to be like, oh, hey, hey, I got you. Don't what? You want to go where? Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're paying for all the dinners, <laughs> yeah. you're, uh, all the Ubers, everything. Literally. The like, tables. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, that's that's crazy. crazy. Yeah. 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 Dude, yeah. I bought a sports car. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, was say, so was, I read my favorite book that I read this year is Green Lights. <laughs> okay. Matthew McConaughey's uh, autobiography. I've mm-hmm. heard it's amazing. Uh, yeah. It's, that's on, it's, that's it's, on my list. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. And so I did it. I read it a really cool way. I did the audio book, but I also bought the book. And, and kind of followed along because he narrates it, so it's nice to hear it in his voice. Mm-hmm. And then he's got some journal notes and pictures that well, you right, can't right. that all you right, can't right, hear right. the thing. But anyway, he talks about buying a sports car, yeah. and he says, uh, so he was like kind of kind of like the cool, not the cool guy at his school, but everybody knew him, and he had like a very charismatic personality at his school, and he had this mm-hmm. pickup truck with a megaphone in it. And so when people would, were walking by in school, he would go, "Hmm, Sally, looking good today in her, in her jacket. She looks fantastic. Everybody look at Sally. And everybody loved it. You know what I mean? You know, Sally loved it. Mm-hmm. Everybody laughed. That's he amazing. was a charismatic dude. But then he went and traded the truck, made some money one summer, traded the truck for like a cherry red Corvette. Mm-hmm. He drove it to school and parked it in the back parking lot so nobody could dent his car. All of a sudden, n- and none of the girls were, that were hanging out with him after school, going mudding in his truck with him, were coming around and hanging out with him anymore. Mm. It's because he lost what made him cool in the first place. Mm. His old truck mm. with the megaphones. Charm. He went and yeah. bought a cherry red sports car thinking that made him cool. Mm. When that's the very thing that made him uncool. Wow. So you got to be careful buying things that think, thinking they're going to make you cool and make you look better. When ultimately that takes away from who you are as a person. I love that. I love that. That's powerful. that's a gem. Man. Y'all, go replay that shit. <laughs> that's a gem. It's powerful because someone like me, where I, my family, like, we're cool. We're middle class family. You know, we weren't like poor, but like, it was paycheck to paycheck every month, right? You you start making money, right? You're making, you're getting paid chip, you're paid chip every two weeks on an episode. You guys know you're making bread. It's so easy to be like, okay, what do I, what do I want to do with this? You know what I'm saying? Like, what's the process of like, okay, how do you put this away? How you do this? How you do this? And a lot of people, I find themselves um, doing the whole keeping up with the Jones thing, especially with social media now, because it's like, now I can buy this. I can do this. I can get perception. But it drains a lot of you because you start doing things that's not out of your character. I think that's such a powerful story because Matthew McConaughey, man, this guy's iconic. And he's like, dude, I lost my sauce. When I was trying to think that something materialistically was gonna make me cool, when I was already cool, he was already cool, and it's in your own value. That's yeah. so powerful. Exactly. That's so powerful. You know, yeah, you lose sight of who you are with all of your things. Then what are you left with? Just a bunch of things and not not knowing yourself. That's Literally. you know. Not There's scary. something in yoga called pranayama, which is life force energy. Mm. It basically, translates to. Um, I took, I, I got yoga certified actually, uh, last year, beginning of Sick. last year. Awesome, so, so talk about like growth and things you do for yourself. That mm. was like life changing for me. Mm. Um, but the idea and the concept of pranayama that we all have this life force energy inside ourselves and just being aware of how you spend that energy, mm. who you give that energy to, I think is really important too. And, and you mentioned change a little bit earlier. Uh, so another thing that came out of the, the yoga certif- certification was um, our mantra, our quote, which was change happens at the end of your comfort zone. Mm. I think the more people get out of their comfort zone, the more they'll find the change. Totally. It's easy to get comfy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's facts. Yeah. We are our habits, man. Yeah. You know? So once you start picking up certain patterns and things like that, it's very easy to say. Mm-hmm. We are our thoughts too. When I yeah. get when i go out of my comfort zone like in an audition and i kind of let my inhibitions down i stop guarding 
I stop thinking about what I'm saying or start like monitoring myself, which is something I do sometimes. And mm -hmm. those aren't the, the auditions that I get. But when I let my like inhibitions go, I almost feel like uh, when I'm done that I was like, like uh, kind of naked for a moment. Like I kind of wore my heart on my sleeve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And at the end of it, I feel uh, like I exposed myself. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you, know, I, you know what I mean? I, I literally do. And yeah. then, and then after, and I, it's almost like a feel of relief because I feel comfortable now with those people that I just did that in front of. Mm -hmm. I can go do it again. I can go do the yeah. next thing, another thing. Mm -hmm. I think the best auditions are the ones that you feel absolutely exhausted. At yeah. the end, I want to make it clear to on. everybody at home that I've never exposed myself. <laughs> 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 you just butt naked yeah. all auditions. Like what you see? Yeah. You give me a call back. What's up? <laughs> 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 That's comedy, dude. That is funny. Dude, I, I think what any actor in this business should do is always find a way to leverage what they're doing in the business. Because being an actor, if like naturally opens up the door yeah. for us, I'm starting my tequila brand. I was like, yo, where's that? I'm bro. Yeah. But, but I think it's smart because it's like, it's like, look, you know, once, once you get the opportunity to where like, yo, you've got the eyes on you, like find a way to like add some type of benefit or value, right? Like, I love that you're like, yo, I teach acting classes now, you know, like I'm helping kids out. Like, yeah, yeah you're cool. working, you got your stuff handling, but like you find a way to add value and give back. Like, what's your version of like giving back, you know? Yeah, I work with, uh, with mm -hmm. a couple of different charities. One that I love is Habitat for Humanity, which mm -hmm. helps provide homes for lower income families. And it's super fun. We have these build days, which you guys should all come out and do once, so, yeah. once we get back to a normal, uh, so. normal world. It's super mm -hmm. sick. They, we get like a bunch of people together and mm -hmm. put together, you know, four walls and we move the, the walls to the location site and paint the house and That's get fire. the family like moved in. That's a it's vibe. Super cool. That's I love that. fire. It's like, a, it's a great community. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's something I've been part of uh, since I moved out to LA. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I would love to eventually, you know, work with kids and, and do some sort of acting intensive. I think that would be super sick. cool. I love that you do that. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, you should come by. Yeah, that'd something. be sick. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Okay, so then like, just to like wrap things up, if there was anything that you could just like want just to get off your chest or say to like the person or the kid at home right now and that is an actor or that's been in the business working or that hasn't been working or maybe wants to get into it, what's the best advice that you feel like you would give to them? I feel like uh, be persistent, be consistent, show up, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, and not, you know, don't let your dreams go. I feel mm -hmm. like you got to chase your dreams. I feel like so many people shortstop themselves before they really unlock their full potential. Mm -hmm. So if you really feel like that's what you should be doing, I think that's what you should be doing. Mm -hmm. That's fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you? that's a good, that's, how do I follow up on that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right now, I think there has never been a better time to make money doing what you love. Mm -hmm. Right. In this so-called passion economy. And even with acting, I'm curious where it's going to take people. You know, if you're a singer, you can upload videos of yourself singing. You can monetize that. You can right. create a brand from and home, from yeah. home, um, rather cheaply with it, with your iPhone. Right. Mm. Um, with acting, I'm curious where that's going to take people because it's not one of those things you can just upload yourself acting and it's going to somehow go viral. Mm -hmm. Right. But I think there are opportunities for that to happen. So I just say, you know, you asked what should people know if they're just starting out or they're stuck or they're trying to keep moving? I just say, just find other ways you can monetize what you love. Mm. So it'll never feel like work. And what Colin said, like, just start, just go be consistent to that same effect though. And I think you might agree. I think we probably all agree. And we talked talk briefly talking about this before the cameras are rolling is that we don't encourage people to do things online because they think that's going to make them more popular or because they think that's going to make them more money. I, we want to encourage people to do things mm -hmm. that they love. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it doesn't get a lot of views right away, right away. If it's something that you put your heart into and you actually rock with it, then all right, cool. Just keep dialing the, turning the dial. Yeah. Like, eventually people are going to catch on and be like, this is for me. Yeah. Right. I, I heard, I heard, uh, I think it was Ty Lopez who says, but like, Everybody's interested in what you're interested in. Like, yeah. oh, it's always, no, I'm sorry. There's always somebody interested in what you're interested in. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. And it's like, damn. It's like, don't feel like you need to do skits or pranks or. But unless you like to. Unless you, you love like it. To. But yeah, no. Yeah, just because like, they if your heart, just, Yeah, if yeah. your heart's not in it, if you're just doing it for because you're like, well, 
It's the only way for me to grow and get views. Like, don't dive into it. But if you're funny and like that's your want to do that, then do kill that, that shit. Yeah, that's I, I completely agree. I'm all about that. But yeah. I love that you brought it up though, because it's like, you know, as as strong individuals, as strong men, right? And I, I see how you are with people, I see how you are with people, I see how you are with people. We all lead by example every day, and our life is our message to the world. So I love the responsibility that all of us take to make sure it's inspiring. You know, it's it's a lot of, it's not a lot of weight, but it's a big responsibility to take on. And then you have people looking up to you. I'm sure you have people in your family that are like, you know, tons of act. Like, what do I need to do to get started? I'm sure the kids you're helping out, people in your family or friends, they're like, what, like, like, what's what's the first the first step? You know, Adam, I know he's the black sheep in this family, so he's just breaking <laughs> all kinds of barriers. This family, he's yeah. Middle Eastern family, literally, so. like he's the actor where all of them are like, it's it's. The traditional, right? Yeah. Traditional, and also like being able. To, I always want to encourage more people, like you said. I think it's so powerful. You said that to encourage more people to do things that align with your heart and do things that really align with your vision, because that's where everything will come from. Yeah, I mean, I think when you, you know? get up out of the, when you wake up in the morning and you think about what your goals are, and like mm-hmm. you're I, you're like I'm driven towards like like doing things that I love and um, you know when I have an audition I'm like I get up out of the bed earlier that day because I know I have to be there there we go you know what I mean so and I feel like it's really tough to get out of bed and do things when you don't want to be there yeah yeah Yeah. I found this 25 year plan it's just the (laughs) idea that you write down on a piece of paper Mm -hmm. where you want to be in 25 years whether it's financially and Mm -hmm. your love and happiness and family and relationships um, and the kind of people you want to be around. So being able to visualize it, write it down, uh, that's that's been like really helpful for me to like that's when it. you get out up in the morning, like not not just knowing like where you're supposed to go and where you're supposed to be, but why you're supposed to be here and why mm-hmm. you want to be doing this. Like you things. know what I think helps with the why too? I got this from Tony Robbins. He just did this all the Tony Robbins seminar. Oh, right? oh, did you? Oh, no, I wish the power with him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. my friend AP is doing that right now. Yeah, it's that's not, cool. I'm, how was I'm, it? I'm, Obviously, I'm supposed to be on it right now, but podcast. But it, it was <laughs> <Fun> podcast. <laughs> podcast you know? um, Is it at a set time, like on a set day? Yeah, it's been Thursday through Sunday. It starts in the mornings, right? Well. Six a.m. Yeah, yeah, six a.m. Yeah. to like God. eight p.m. He's now on this computer, locked in all day. I'm yeah. now it's still here. Tony, you still here? Tony's just Tony's, just, Tony's there the whole time doing yeah. it. Yeah. He's just lot. yelling. He's yeah. just yeah. the whole time. <laughs> but a lot of the things he says is exactly what you said, man. He's all about your why. He's like. You know, you can do anything in this life if you have a proper why. You know, if you if you know why you're doing things, that's your motivator. You don't yeah. need to find motivation, find your why, and it'll take you to your motivation. You know? It might go back to technique, but in acting, it's the same thing. We want to figure out what our why? character's why is yes. because it's just gonna say the it same stakes. Thing. It's yeah. life or death. Yeah. Yeah. So if you know your why, you're willing to do anything to get there. I mean. Yeah. Hopefully not any bad things, but yeah. we all have the right intentions, yeah. right? So uh, we'll the director find a way. Daybreak, the director of Daybreak, he'd always be like, I would always be like, he'd be like, what, what, what are you doing in the scene? I'd be like, blah, blah, blah. And he'd be like, but why? And I'd yeah. be like, blah, blah, blah. And he'd be like, but why? why? And he'd be like, dude, <laughs> stop it right now. I got to the fourth line. I don't know it was good. <laughs> because I want love. Yes, there you go. Come on. There you go. There you go. That's a oh, yeah. you know, that's such a, a, a huge objective too. It's, it's yeah, seven thirty. Right? We wrapped the wrap in half an hour. Are we going to overtime. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, is this is the martini shot. shot. This is the martini <laughs> shot. Oh my bro, you gotta know your why. My help was helping me also uh, figure out my why more. Which again, I bring back to Tony. Um, I took the time to also write down the things I was dissatisfied with in my life. I like that. I don't know if you guys have ever done that, but I suggest you try it. Financially, spiritually, mentally, emotionally. Probably makes it a lot easier to get rid of them after. Exactly. Yeah. Because to realize what you want, you gotta realize what the hell is it that you don't want. Mm-hmm. And you start, you start realizing like, I, I was like, okay, mentally, what am I dissatisfied with? And you'd be real honest with yourself, you, because you don't want to like, you don't want to go to vibration like, I'm not, I'm cool, I'm feeling good. But yeah. it's like, for me, an area was like, damn, I'm dissatisfied with my uh, rate of reading. I haven't been reading books as much as so I, I listen up, but I need to read. You know what I'm saying? I need to work, I need to work that out. Uh, uh, physically, I was like, man, I work out a lot, but I don't pay attention to re- rehabilitation of my body, so I have injuries. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, financially, I was like, how many assets do I have? You know, um, uh, when it comes to spiritually, I was like, I pray every day, I give up energy, but how much time do I give to meditation? To just taking 10 full minutes to quiet my mind, you know? So all these things that I realized, and then you also start realizing like, were you dissatisfied with in others? Like, 
you're dissatisfied with some of your relationships. Like just be, just throw it on the table because it helps you understand like your why, and you and then you flip it. You go, well, um, what what will it cost me if I don't do this? If so you don't change it. Mm-hmm. If you don't change, what will it cost me? Damn, I can't help my family. Damn, I won't do this. So you start writing down these things. You're like damn so it expands your why on such a deeper level mm-hmm. and i've learned to translate that as an actor too now and, and figuring out your why as a human being will always translate into your work i feel like whether you do music you do um art in terms of painting you're an actor you're a filmmaker but knowing your why is what not only makes you different but what makes the work also authentic and why totally you know what i'm saying i think this is beautiful so thank you for articulating that oh yeah you know like before we wrap things up, um, is there anything you guys are working on right now? You guys are developing that you have in the process. Why are you or? looking at me? <laughs> Go first. I don't know. He gave me a thumbs up. Um, yeah, so I'm working with this company called Lumanu, uh, mm-hmm. and our mission is to empower creators, creators being online social media stars or up and comers, all the way to your freelancers, right? Singers, artists, athletes, um, copywriters. We want to build tools for creators. Mm-hmm. Uh, to thrive online so from financial products to invoicing products all, all that stuff so yeah follow alumani and check that out and then as for acting i mm-hmm. mean you never know when the next role is going to yeah, come yeah, yeah 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 but do you, do you write at all do you do you do that i'm just curious writing like scripts yeah yeah so i've written two pilots so, and two movies okay nice. and a short film yeah um so yeah more hey same. man, it's, I can't wait till they come out. Dude, guys, it takes time for this shit, yo. Yeah. This shit's an investment. When that investment like pays off, though, it, like yeah, we'll see. I mean, like even mm-hmm. talking with other actors, like I was talking with Zach, um, mm-hmm. our friend Zach, about you know pairing up and maybe making a show. We're seeing more and more of our peers. Mm-hmm. Greg Sultan, uh, you know, getting a Greg option. On a, <laughs> he's got an option on a book. I think that's some awesome. Yeah, he's got his good clothing brand out too. Yeah, he's got mm-hmm. his clothing brand. So seeing more and more actors crossing over into social media. I mean, mm-hmm. we all have our pages. Mm-hmm. I think there's a huge opportunity to you know, do more of what we love and earn money there we go. online. So Lumano is helping with that. There we go. That's amazing. Man. That's that. amazing. What are you found? Uh, well, uh, right before the pandemic found out that Daybreak was not continuing for season two. So mm-hmm. that's a bummer, but got to be working on a oh, new... Oh, so it's not coming back? No, it's not coming back. Oh, man. Uh, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. It happens, you know, it's yeah. been a tough year. But gotta See be that attitude? On. The attitude of just moving on and yeah, like looking like... forward? It's, it like, was, I'll be honest, it was a little hard to get over, but I love that show. Oh, I, I appreciate it. Ass, I appreciate so. it. It's just a lot. There was a lot of, there was a lot of uh, balls in the air and couldn't juggle them all. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's, uh, when it comes down to it, they made a decision and that's their decision. Mm-hmm. But I'm working on a new Netflix show. Can't Sick. talk about what it is quite just yet, like but that, hopefully yeah. back on the pod and we'll Let's talk go. about it. Let's go. Yeah. Right. The thing is, dude, that is like, you know what? I'm so glad you brought that up, though, that you're like, hey, you know what? This guy just roll with the punches, bro, because that's how you continue it, you know? And I feel like, you know, all of our experiences always just prepare us for the next moment of opportunity. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's amazing, you yeah, know? Thanks, bro. For real, for real, for real. Yeah. Um, you guys are both crushing this, man. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks for having us thanks on. Thanks for having us. You're a great host. Absolutely. 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 It's professional. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we're doing right now. That's what we're doing. Yo, so I, just to, I just wanted to thank you guys for being part of episode three of yeah. the Inspired Inspire Roundtable. Again, check out Blake Michael, Cullen Ford, Adam Shikarwe, and then me, Dominic Columbus. We got more heat dropping your way. You know what I'm saying? So, appreciate y'all. Yeah. Peace. Yeah. Let's get it.